Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 3, the periodic table. And now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 3.2 periodicity part 5 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn on how to define the electron negativity. Next, we're going to explain the variation in electron negativity of elements across period 2 and 3 as well as down the group. Next, we're going to explain the acid-base character of oxides of elements in the period 3. So the linear outcome here will be covered in part 5, which is the last part, which is in this video. So without any further ado, let us start. So electronegativity. Electronegativity is basically a relative tendency of an atom to attract electrons to itself when chemically combined with another atom. So generally, you can say that, um, for example, fluorine will have a really, really high tendency in order to attract electrons. So electron from another atom can be pulled very, very strongly by the fluorine atom. And this is the measure of electronegativity, the tendency for it to become negative charge, which is F minus. Okay? And what is meant by this statement here, which is to attract it, electron to itself when chemically combined with another atom, means that um, you will learn about the idea of electronegativity in the next chapter, which is in chapter 4, and you will see that they're going to be a arrow something like this. So you know that because fluorine is very, very electronegativity, it is very, very electronegative, means that the hydrogen, the electrons from the hydrogen, going to be pulled more strongly to the fluorine. So therefore, the electron density is going to be mostly go to the fluorine side. Okay, and this will be learn more about about this in the next chapter. But for now, you will know that the idea of electronegativity is a tendency to attract electron to itself. Alright, an atom with a strong attraction for the bonding electrons are said to have a high electronegativity. Lebih kuat dia tarik electron, lagi tinggi electronegativity dia. And the most widely used skill was developed by the Linus Pauling. And according to him, the most electronegative element is fluorine with a value of 4.0. And by understanding that fluorine has having a highest electronegativity, he worked out the electronegativity of other elements with reference to fluorine. Okay, and as what you can see here, the increasing electronegativity goes towards fluorine. And across the period, the electronegativity increases. Same goes to up to the group. Why is that? Let us look into the slide here. So across a period, we can say that the electronegativity increases across a period. This is because, as what you can see here, the proton number increases across the period. So when the proton number increases, the effective nuclear charge increases, and hence the valence electron will be pulled more strongly to the nucleus and this causes the atom to shrink and the radii will become smaller. So uh, from here you can see that um, since the size gets smaller, it will be easier okay, the size gets smaller, it will, it will be easier to attract electrons to it itself. So you can say that as we go across the period, atomic size decreases as it experiences a greater effective nuclear charge. So, because the size is getting smaller, it will have a greater ability to attract the bonding electron. As a result, the electronegativity increases across the period. For, for the electronegativity down the group, we can say that the electronegativity decreases. So why is that? The electronegativity decreases down the group because you know that down the group, the principal quantum number increases. So when the principal quantum number increases, there are more electrons that are present in order to shield the electron, and it's gonna become the atom gonna be further and further and further away from the nucleus, and it is more difficult to accept the electron. So you can say that going down a group, the atomic size increases, and this causes a mutual repulsion between the electrons 
to increase. So as a result, it's going to be appear to be larger, and they're gonna they're not gonna have a strong attraction between from the electrons with the nucleus. As a result, it will has a lesser ability to attract electron towards itself. Hence, the electronegativity decreases down the true. All right, very simple. Now let us look into the example one. So for example one, we need to arrange the elements in the order of the increasing electronegativity. So for A, we have sodium, lithium, cesium, and potassium. So all of these are in group one. Okay, so from here, you will know that down the group, the atomic size will get larger and the electronegativity will decrease. So atomic radii will get, will get larger and the electronegativity will get smaller. Okay, and from here, we know that the largest atom is going to be cesium because it is down the group. So it's going to be the least electronegative. Okay, and then the second largest is going to be potassium. Okay, and then the third largest is going to be sodium and then the smallest one is lithium okay so the lithium is the smallest atom among the others and therefore will have the highest electron negativity so since it is small it is easier for it to attract electron okay now for question b we have cl we have sulfur, we have silicon, as, as well as we have Na. So you know that it is across the period. So from here, across the period, the atomic radii will get smaller. So when across the when atomic radii gets smaller, the electronegativity will get higher. So the highest electronegativity is chlorine followed by sulfur, followed by silicon, and lastly, sodium. And this one is the most electronegativity. Okay, electronegativity is the highest, and it is the smallest atomic radii. Okay, so the answer is going to be sodium, silicon, sulfur, and chlorine. All right. So that's all for example one. So for the next part is the acid base characters of oxides of element in period three. So for period three, we have sodium metal, magnesium, aluminum metal, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. So each metal and non-metal here will have its own character. So the character that we're going to look at is the acid base character. So as what you know that, Group 1 and group 2 is an alkali metal, and here is an alkali earth metal. So alkali and alkali earth metal, when it combine with oxygen and dissolve in water, they're going to form basic oxide, a cified alkali. Meanwhile, for, al for aluminium, it, is, it shows a distinctive acid-base character, which is an amphoteric oxide. So amphoteric oxide means that it can react as acid and a base. So both of them. Okay. And for the non-metal here, which is uh, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, including silicon, it shows a acidic oxide. Okay. So generally, we can say that the metal will usually form a basic oxide, whereas the non-metal here will form acidic oxide. However, do not about the information here. Even though aluminium is a metal, but aluminium has its distinctive properties in which it can react as an acid as well as a base, and therefore they are known as the amphoteric oxide. And for silicon, silicon is not non-metal. Silicon is 
essentially a metalloid, which means that it is a semi-metal. Okay. However, in terms of acid-base character, it acts as an acidic oxide. Okay, so here are just the two differences here. Okay. And for example of equation, so you just need to know it uh, roughly. So let's say I'm taking the example of sodium here. Uh, you can prove that it is a basic oxide when you are when you are reacting the sodium with oxygen in order to form basic oxide, and then this oxide will then react it with water in order to form basic solution. So let's say if you have a sodium metal, and then you let it react with oxygen for a long time with a high temperature, what you're gonna get is a sodium oxide. And this sodium oxide, when you dissolve in water, what you're gonna get is sodium hydroxide. So when you tested it with a litmus paper, what you're gonna see that the red litmus paper will turn blue, and this shows that it has the basic properties. Okay, and you can also do that for other elements and test that with a litmus paper. So when it turns blue, then it is a basic oxide. Okay. So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.